Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. The U.S. government has been sending strong hints about a possible U.S. bombing of Iran. Activists took the streets of downtown Chicago to send a message for peace, as we'll see in this next segment. More than 200 protesters assembled in downtown Chicago to rally outside the State of Illinois building and march against the possible bombing of Iran in the face of belligerent policy remarks by the U.S. government and strong hints of possible future military actions. They're threatening a blockade. They're threatening more economic sanctions. They're threatening big military action using nuclear weapons that are stronger than the weapons used on Japan after World War II. And yet Iran has not threatened aggression on any other country. Iran has violated no international laws. I was raised in Iran. I know the people in Iran. I look around me and I don't see any difference. And I've lived in this country for 40 years. People are people everywhere. They're pursuing the same kind of goals that everybody in this country is pursuing. And they're fighting the same kind of demons, the same kind of government we are involved in fighting in this country. We want health care for everybody, we don't have it. We want jobs, we don't have it. We want police brutality to seize it, but it just keeps on going on and on. In the coming administration, no matter who that administration is, we need to really think about, we need to really work to take back our government, to take back the functions that should be done by government and not by private military contractors who are only thinking about their bottom line. Now this war, this so-called war on terror is not Bush's war. It's Wall Street's war. This, this war is also the war of every politician in Washington who has voted to authorize funding to conduct this war. This war is also the policy of the same corporate and financial forces who have thrust workers the world over into a race to the bottom. A race to the bottom which is destroying America's working middle class and is responsible for the financial crisis that presently grips our country's economy and is dragging the whole world economy down with it. There are some people that say, don't protest, go register voters. And we tell them to vote for who? To vote for the guy that wants 100 more years of war in Iraq? To vote for the guy that wants to take the soldiers out of Iraq and put them in Iran? No way! No way! That's why we keep protesting, we keep coming out, we keep doing direct actions. We are on the spot of the mainstream media and everybody who wants to see us. We are fighting and we are not going to stop fighting and keep quiet. Not for one more minute, not for a day, not for a week, not forever. After the half-hour-long rally, the participants marched from the State of Illinois building. They headed first to a nearby Republican Party campaign office. On the 10th floor is one of four Illinois Republican headquarters. There are some of the ass who brought us the Iraq War. Let's not let them give us the Iran War. The marchers then headed north on Wells Street up to Wacker, then east just past Michigan Avenue to the Israeli consulate. The Omer government of Israel was very concerned that the United States was getting soft on Iran. That would be just by even doing negotiations and suggesting that, and as many of us know, negotiations that the United States is doing with Iran right now is simply a smoke screen. Well, the Israeli government is very concerned that the U.S. government is maybe getting soft in Iran. And one of the things Obama said was, 
They seem to be itching to bomb Iran. And as you probably know, about a month ago, the Israeli government did a number of exercises about exactly how they would go about bombing Iran's nuclear facilities. The marchers then proceeded south on Michigan Avenue to Randolph Street to a nearby Democratic Party campaign office to join up with a second protest on behalf of single-payer health care already underway. Now, what do we want? Troops home. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Troops home. When do we want it? Now. Troops home. The only true universal health care is single-payer. Democratic National Committee in that building there, we're asking them to put single-payer health care on the platform. They're planning the platform next week. How can you have any decent health care in a country which spends as much on its military as the rest of the world combined? Is Barack Obama a peace candidate? No! I didn't hear you because there are too many Democratic shouting in my ear. Is Barack Obama a peace candidate? No! Okay, and let's continue to tell him that and everyone else here. Come on, you people on the bus, chant with us. We want justice. We want peace. You are out of the Middle East. We want justice. We want peace. You are out of the Middle East. I'm Alejandro Molina, and you're watching Chicago Independent Television. I see the soul of a nation uh, must be true cause I've seen it on TV What would you do with three trillion dollars? The three trillion dollar shopping spree is your chance to find out. Want to reign over your own island nation? Go right ahead. Or maybe fund research that will cure a deadly disease. It's up to you. You can even wage an endless war that will cripple America's economy. With the $3 trillion shopping spree, anything's possible. Bill in Los Angeles bought 100,000 luxury yachts, 20,000 sprawling estates, and 650,000 private islands. Mary in Michigan gave health care to all Americans and still had $2.8 trillion left over. George B. in Washington started an illegal war that resulted in 151,000 dead Iraqi civilians. Gary in Indiana bought 1.5 billion pounds of beluga caviar. Debbie in New York bought 500 schools in her home state and still had $2,987,000,000,000 left for school supplies. Donald R. in Arlington, Virginia destabilized an entire region and displaced four million innocent people. What will you do with three trillion dollars? Go to www.3trillion.org and spend, spend, spend.